one. Well, we're on Success Mindset uh, show and podcast goes out on all social media platforms. And if you're watching this, you are somebody that loves to meet interesting, ambitious, driven, successful, happy, maybe not happy people in the world that are out doing their thing all over the world. And I love what I do probably because I get to meet people like you on the <laughs> on the daily. And this is just like a minute part of my business, but it has it it has a big impact in my business in terms of people follow for the for the the wisdom and the knowledge gained by people like yourself coming on. So for anybody listening, I came across Dr. Poppy Gibson on Twitter. On Twitter. Now Poppy is on other platforms and she can correct me if I'm wrong when I eventually let her speak. You're listening, you're saying is Twitter, she seems to be quite the phenomenon on Twitter and uh and and like I I I myself post on Twitter and and uh and and sometimes I think my, all my followings passed away. But I when I look at when I look at Poppy, she's very engaging. People follow her, they're very they're in she has a very engaged following, they're passionate about what she posts about, they're very supportive as well. And I think that's how you show up online, Poppy. You show up with a good energy and a good vibe. But before that, please, please, please introduce your good self, where you are in the world and what you do. Thank you, Gary. Thank you. So, yes. Hi, I'm Poppy. I'm in Essex. So just kind of east of London here in England. And I work at university. I'm a senior lecturer in primary education. So hopefully inspiring uh, the next generation of teachers as they go out into the world so yeah, that's that's me. That's you, that's you. And you're much more than that in lots of ways as well. And um, tell me this here. You know what I'm really, really interested to know is this. You have got such a positive outlook. Like I follow your content. I actually have your notification turned on so that I see your- That means a lot. Thanks, Gary. Right, right, right. <laughs> because, because I like receiving good information that raises my vibration, right? And- can I ask you this? Where does that all come from for you to show up and turn up like that? Because that's a that's it looks like it's a passion of yours to do that. Yeah, it's a passion, but do you know I'm gonna feel bad saying it. I don't think it comes from a positive place. Yeah. And I think that's what spurs me on even more. So yeah. I guess there are many things that make me want to show up for other people and maybe it comes back to you know, times maybe where I didn't feel people showed up for me. Yeah. You know, I had an amazing childhood. I can't fault it. I lived in the country. I lived in Wales. I had a sheep as a pet, Gary. Uh, everything a, a young girl could want. But um, my mother was older. She had, she lost her dad when she was a teenager. And I think she'd been brought up in a very strict environment. So I think a lot of my my wanting to show up for people now comes from me. Although, um, again, I love my mum, but she brought me up in a way where compliments weren't necessary to raising a child. Um, even even on my wedding day, I came out, in, I can't I'm telling you this, I came out on my wedding day, you know, I've just put my dress on for the first time. My bridesmaids are all like crying. And I came out and my mum was just stood there. Uh, my dad had died by this point. My mum was stood there and, and she didn't say anything. She and she went, "Oh, I'm going to go find my seat, uh, ready for the ceremony." And I went, "Aren't you going to say I look nice? Are you even going to say I look nice?" Yeah. And she went, "You always look nice." And then she like went, and um, that's just like a tip of an iceberg. Yeah. Again, do did I need to hear that I look nice? You know, that's that's not a big thing. But on your wedding day, yeah. it's a very it's like you know a rite of passage for some of us. Yeah. Um, I just wanted a compliment, and so. I think the one thing that I've learned, although I've, you know, like many great things from my mom, is um, actually it doesn't hurt to give praise sometimes. And I think that's what I love about social media. You don't have to know someone. You can still recognize something good they've done, recognize a good quality in them uh, and praise them. Why not? Like it takes you a second. It yeah. could really mean something for that person who might not have someone offline praising yeah. them. And again, yeah. life's not about praise. But sometimes we, particularly if we have a negative inner voice, yeah. sometimes those outer positive voices yeah. can be really yeah. meaningful. Yeah, well, listen, I thank you for sharing that so honestly. And I can relate to that in many, many, many ways. When you were in your wedding dress? 
<laughs> no, that's just dresses, maybe, but that's just that's at home and that's just on a Saturday. But uh, <laughs> uh, that's a joke before anybody trolls me. Do you see? So, not that there's anything wrong with that, but listen, what, what I was wanting to ask you is this here, and you've been very, very honest, and thanks for sharing that as well. I really appreciate that, that I suppose vulnerability or courage or whatever, all those words, all the buzzwords. Can I ask you this? And I asked you from a personal reason, which I'll share straight after. Did your mother, would your mother have been a person that told you she loved you? Oh, that's deep, I know. I Do you know what? I know she loved me and I know she loves me now. Yeah. Yeah. But I think films and books made me think that you to your parents it. would say they love you all the time. You know, I watched those cheesy movies where, yeah. you know, the mum and daughter are in dressing, like matching clothes and that, that wasn't me. That's not us. We don't have any shared interests. No. Uh, sometimes, Gary, again, I don't know, I'm oversharing. If I go and like, get my nails done, I, I kind of find it comforting if I sit next to like an older woman. And I like thinking, people might think that's me and my mom out on a, a yeah. nail spa date. Like, it's definitely not. You would not catch my mom yeah. doing anything with me. Yeah. Uh, but I know she loves me. It's, you know, yeah. I know she does. And everything she's done for me always. Of course. You know, she could not have done more. Yeah. Um, but I guess that's where I wonder, do we need to say it? And then with my three children of my own, I say I love them. I don't know. I can't count how many times. Every time they exactly. leave, every time I leave a room, I tell them I love them. And then, but then I wonder, am I saying it too much? Because I think how I was brought up and, and it made me strive for more. And then I think, am I making my children too soft by, by always wanting to talk about their emotions and feelings? Part of me does wonder. Yeah. Am I going to make them less successful in life? I don't whatever think so. that means to them. Am I, am I actually doing them a disservice? I don't think so. Do you know? Do you know what I think? I think you're going to make them happier, happier human beings. Like you know, because I'll share. I'll, I'll share something with you that I wasn't planning to, but it's, I have shared it before publicly anyway. But and my mother and father aren't going to listen to this or aren't going to watch anything I do ever, <laughs> right? And I, I grew up. I grew up. Um, my mother and father are still married. They married in 19... Uh, no, hold on. They got married in 1975. So anyway, they're still married, still alive. But I grew up and uh, my mother and father never, ever, ever, ever told me they love me. Ever. Certainly not that I can remember. So that shows you where I... where the But... They provided, we lived in a nice house, went to school, never missed a day, it was always turned out well, had good Christmases, had holidays um, and stuff like that. But there was definitely a scarce scarcity of emotional intelligence in my house. You were never asked how you were how you felt. You were never asked, were you okay? You were never told you were loved. You were never, never said they were proud of you. Ever, 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 like ever. Even on my wedding day, <laughs> which is where we have a synergy here by the way yeah when my when my father got up to speak about me didn't have much nice to say he basically said um he he, he wasn't even funny he, he stood up and he started rhyming off a list of a shopping list and then he goes well uh, gary that's your it's your it's your uh it's your role to provide all that now and uh and um, I'm, at least you've turned up here today. So suppose that's something for you. Uh, and then he said something like to my wife, he's your problem now. And laughed. Thinking that was a big joke. I mean, did, did the audience laugh with him? I, th I, th I think I think they might have because they thought it was like a reciprocal or it was received well or it was like nearly his humour or something. But you, know, but you weren't laughing. <laughs> well, I, I will. Am I laughing now? You know what I mean. And I, <laughs> and, and that's like twenty years, twenty odd years later, and and I didn't appreciate it. But you, I, I share that with you, so that shows you a snapshot of what daily life would have been like, and and you know. But here, here's another thing. I for I I actually hated my father for a long time. When I got into my teenage years, we fought, and I was taking, I was I was doing things I shouldn't have been doing, right. And uh, nothing illegal. -ish. You know what I mean? I was doing things I shouldn't have been doing. And uh, and he couldn't cope with that because he couldn't talk to me because he hadn't got my respect. And and uh, so I hated him. But guess what? Seeing years to come, I actually forgave him in my mind. 
I forgive him and I love him and I love him dearly. And I forgive him for what he knew not and what he couldn't do and what he didn't have in his toolbox to give to me. And I forgive him, you know, but I share that with you because that's largely why I do what I do. And you turn up on yeah. social media because Thank of you for sharing that. And I think that that just, you know, shows something for your character that, you know, for you to forgive him and process that. And obviously still haunts you because you've just, you know, it's on the tip of your mind from something however long ago you said it was. Yeah. Um, but I love that you use that word toolbox because this is something that I use now to protect myself mm -hmm. uh, against my mom. Like sometimes when I think about my relationship with my mom, I, I do think it is toxic. Yeah. And again, I love her. Yeah, I love yeah. everything she's done for me. I'm so grateful. But um, particularly in COVID. So if I give you another example. Yeah. So uh, because my mother was older, she's obviously retired. Um, I was really worried about her being isolated and so I was really and again I because I think I, I all I want is her to be proud yeah. uh, which comes from maybe because she didn't always say it although maybe yeah. she was but I did I'd never heard it mm -hmm. like through COVID I you know everyone was going online buying everything yeah. I was going online buying everything for my mum like all the time I just wanted to please her I mean I'm a people pleaser anyway done yeah. by you Gary but yeah. but with my mum it's like next level because the harder I try to please her, it's almost like the less impressed she is. And and one day, um, I remember getting my, my two sons and I said, I know, like, Nanny's stuck at home. She's probably really bored. Let's sort all your puzzles. You know, they had hundreds of jigsaw puzzles. Like, we'll count every box to check every piece is there. You know, there's nothing worse than you get nearly finished and some pieces are missing. So we, my two boys sat, we spent a whole day counting all the puzzles. We found other, like, little games, you know, cards and things. Um, and we put them all in a huge bag and we went to my mom's with masks and everything, a doorstep delivery. And I said, we bought you loads of puzzles. Like the, the boys have spent ages sorting them out. Now you'll have something to do, you know, cause you're stuck indoors in lockdown. And um, she just said, I've never liked puzzles. And like, I was like, it's okay to crush me. Yeah. But like my two little people who yeah. spend a lot of time sorting out puzzles are here. Um, but then toolbox. So, but then I think, she does she just doesn't have the tools no she herself and and this is how i make it feel better to me mm. i don't know what her life was like growing up but i used to see my nan that was her mom once a year yeah. i didn't have a relationship with her yeah. we would go for like an annual visit she lived down on the coast south coast of england we'd go once a year and see her and so again that also makes me think that's what my mom normalized as a relationship between a mother and daughter yeah. and and she was probably never told like or, or asked how are you like you say you probably never asked those questions she probably never w was talked to kindly so actually she just doesn't have the tools so here's what I try and think you know she doesn't have the vocabulary to say it in a different way she's just being honest you know and honesty is a good thing don't don't get me wrong um but I think what I've learned from that is when to be honest and I can be brutally honest but also when to be kinder yeah. um, and that's something I'm trying to do like every day with my own children you know when to be honest you know if I don't like puzzles or I don't like something but also when to just put them first and that's hard you know people are selfish by nature we wanted to survive the, the mammoth attack or whatever or get the best shelter but but we're living in a you know most of us in a safe place most of us mm. and so for my children I just think what can I do more yeah. And I think it's just that kindness and yeah. and hopefully, yeah, like you said, not decreasing. You spoke earlier about that, that billionaire who decreased yeah. your yeah. brain you, value. You know something I want to share, I'll come back at you there, what you were saying there, you know, and I know, and I know, and I know you'll know this. And when I say it, you know, you know when you said there, you said there, it's okay to crush me, but don't crush my children. It's not okay to fucking crush you. You know, it's not okay. Do you know what I'm, you know what I mean? And I know you, I know what you meant. I mean, what you meant was, you know, um, you know, I can deal with it. I have the tools. I can deal with it. I know you better, but don't. But guess what? You see, even that language, I know how we talk to ourselves. It's not OK to crush you. It's not for anybody to crush you. And here's something that, that's, that I need an extension of that. Do you know the way you love your mother? Love yourself even more. Mm -hmm. Even more. And I say, I'm saying that to myself now as therapy as I'm talking to you and looking at you. When I love my father, but don't love him at my expense. Don't love him 
more than I love myself. Mm -hmm. You know, because this is my life. Like my body, my heart, my mind, my soul, my spirit. Love me most of all. And in and, and my own divine way. Love my children equally. And love my wife. And you know what I mean? But certainly don't love a mother or a father more. Love them as much. Love them in a different way. <laughs> yeah. but, but never more than yourself. And that's what you, I'm going to, I'm assuming and I'm guessing and all that. But you know the way we do, we put our parents on our pedestals and we feel bad the way they make us feel. And we go a large part of our life with these things. And that's mm -hmm. because we have put them above us in our self-care and our self-image. You know, we, you know, and, and I, I, that's what I've realized as well. I love my father, but guess what? Not any more than I love myself. Yeah, that's and so that, valuable. And that 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 strengthens my resolve, and my that gives me more. I don't know, just it just empowers me as a human being. I look at my father now, and he's my equal. I I, I respect him as my father in a different way, but as a human being, no better than me. Damn, mm -hmm. no way, no way. You know, yeah. that makes that's sense. amazing. Though. Yeah, I love that, and I think as well as well as realizing that they don't need to be on that pedestal and you don't need to please them all the time. I think as well, learning how you protect yourself. So also just thinking, you know, preparing yourself, you, you've you lived with your parent, you know them, you yeah. know they're not gonna change. So also yeah. just preparing myself like, so I've learned now, don't spend the day sorting out puzzles and go there as a gift, <laughs> like, that, like, don't do that again. Don't, and, and there's so many times now that I catch myself and I think I've learned. And I think that's the good thing that adversity teaches us of course is to learn from it so that was a painful moment but I learned from it so now you know my mum will speak to me she's she's feeling upset about something and I think oh I'm going to send her flowers and I, and I stop myself and I'm like no don't spend 30 pound on flowers get a takeaway at home with your kids like and I stop myself yes. and I, and so I think that's what I've got better at yeah. you know I'll still listen to her I'll still give her my time I'll still text her a, a cheesy gif of like a bouquet of roses but yeah. I think I've learned you, you don't need to go above and beyond. Yeah. And I think that's what I've been doing my whole life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, actually, protect protect yourself, protect yourself is the most important, kind of what you're saying. Love yourself, protect yourself. Otherwise, you're just useless to anyone else. Yeah, yeah. And, and you know, I'll, I'll share another thing with you. And this here is like a, this here is like a therapy session for you and I today, which is great. <laughs> yeah, which, which I'm is, loving which, this. Yeah, so am, I, so am I. It's great. And it'll help other people. It'll help other people, you know. You know, I my why in life uh poppy i did a seven levels deep exercise um uh one time and it's like why do you do what you do oh i do what i do because i want my family to be happy why do you want your family to be happy oh because i want them to have everything they ever wanted why is that important to you oh i want them to have everything they ever wanted because i know what it was like not to be able to and how did you, you so you know what i mean seven levels deep yeah so, i love that so when i got to the seventh level sometimes you can get that in five or nine or whatever but i got that in seven out of seven and mine's was, I wanted to make my wife and children proud of me because my father never was. Wow. Right? So that was my my reason for doing what I do. I wanted him to be proud of me. And I, I think he is proud of me now in his own way today. He still put me, he still, he still likes to, you know, go there when I'm around him too much. But uh, so I just, how I do that, I limit my time around them. I see, I see that I call instead of once a week for an hour, I call once a fortnight for 20 minutes. Uh, it might sound like a lot, but it's a lot more than some people see there. But here, here's something that I'll share with you as well. And this is a, see, over the pandemic, my, my and his, me and his relationship took an upward turn. Do you know why? We connected for the first time ever on WhatsApp. And I, we find each other checking up on one another, sending each other messages, right? Now he's one of my, but I contact him maybe two or three times a week now on WhatsApp. But here's what I define myself doing. Still being that wee boy looking for, because you know what I do, Poppy? Like I'll share, for example, I got a new car three weeks ago. Uh, right. And I, yeah, thank you. And I, <laughs> I sent him the picture. Want to hear well done. You know, I, I was invited to speak at a action mental health group where I go in and talk about gratitude and different things and affirmations and self-confidence and self-image. And I just do it to give back. I do it because I can and I do. 
and and I, sit, sit, I was sending them pictures from it with a crowd and my face up and everything. You know, he was like, "Well done, well done, brilliant." And then I was sending them pictures of whatever, you know, different things. And I'm always looking for face. Yeah. Even now, I swear to you now, no bullshit. I'd show you my WhatsApp, and I'm still doing it. For I hear you. You don't. You don't have to convince me because I feel like we're on the same page. That's that's so me. And do you know what I do when I do that? I'll send her a photo, and I, and I'm waiting for her response. But then what I'll do to protect myself, so anyone listening, like if you're the same as me and Gary, I'll then send it to someone who I know will like. I've got some amazing friends, you know, who I know will go. Oh my god, I love it. That's oh. amazing. Like so, I'll protect myself in that way. I'll send something to her. I know I'm probably gonna get ghosted. Yeah. So I'll send it to other people that I know will affirm it and again life shouldn't be about being affirmed by other people but sometimes yeah sometimes you are still that tiny child you regress and you just need yeah. that little bit of warmth yeah. uh so yeah that's that's yeah. how i do that but i hear you yeah <laughs> I, I i find myself still doing it you know and like like i can say it, I'll, I'll say it on this podcast like you said and sometimes you know the the smallest things can still trigger me the smallest things, and there's nobody else in this world that will trigger me like that. Like, like mm-hmm. I don't give a shit. Like, I'm a good person. I lead with love and kindness. I make mistakes. I'm a flawed character. I'm not perfect, but I lead, I would do my best. I'm doing X, Y, and Z. And and but and you know, I'll un, I'll unfollow or I'll block or I'll mute, and I can cut people and move because for for, for self care purposes and just move. And I've become great at that, by the way. I'm the best you ever seen at that. And, <laughs> And he is he could say one thing. And I'm just, like I was in, I was I was at their house recently and I'm I'm up I've been nominated for a humongous award, right? The, Congrats. The, yeah, thank you. Um whether I get it or not, let's see. It's the biggest of the biggest, so you can use your imagination. It's the biggest of the biggest. Um and I was saying to him, I happen to know that I'm shortlisted. Oh I have to know that I'm under consideration, right? Which is a massive achievement in itself, right? Amazing. And 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 I said that I happened to say I'm up for this, I'm up for this again, looking for and, <laughs> and, and uh, but just but wanting to share about my life as well, right? Yeah, because this is, my, this is my life, this is what I do. So he said I was expecting it would be a first in our family's history, right? You know, it would be, it would be, it would be a legacy for everything. It's like, it's a huge thing, and I'm going to get it right. So I know this. Um, I feel it, and and I and I said it to him, and he turned around. And he said, "I said, what do you think of that?" And he goes, "I think it'd be a bloody miracle if you get that, a miracle." And laughed and walked out of the room. And I'm sitting thinking. He, d- he doesn't actually mean to be, he didn't mean to be really bad. But he really just took me back to being seven years of age and being told I'm not coming to sports day because you don't win anyway and what's the point? And, you know, and I was like, but guess what? I'm going to get this, I'm going to win this award, right? And you see, when I won it, I'm going to take him with me. To mm-hmm. I'm going to lead with love. I'm, oh, going, right. I'm going to kill him with kindness. <laughs> so uh, it, cut, it cuts deep. And that's so true what you say. I think that's why I love social media because you are in control. You can choose who you connect with. Yeah. You can block, disconnect. But that's the thing about parents, right? For many of us, it's the one person you really don't want it to, to come down to blocking. Yeah. Uh, and that, that's why it cuts so deep. Yeah, I'll, t- I'll tell you. I'll tell you what I did. I'll tell you what I did do. And I, I was being facetious now, and I'm sharing this here now. And, and you can love or hate me. Anybody listening to this, I'm just me. I'm telling you the truth. You know by now, I'm a half decent person. But I, this was <laughs> this this was humor, dark humor, right? I'm going to share a bit of dark humor, which is probably not appropriate, but I don't care. This is my channel. So uh, I we were talking about. We were talking, we were talking about their age and he's 72, 72. And I thought, I'll be facetious today in the in the moment. <laughs> he sort of he sort of deserved it. He was annoying me about something. So I thought, I'll not be my best self here. I need to lean into uh, you no know, a bit of naughtiness. I need to I need to be a, that naughty child that annoys him, right? <laughs> so so he's talking about 72, and I'm the longest loving man. And 
And and the Doherty side, they don't they they've all died around sixty five to seventy. You see, right? And I says to him, "That's great. That's great." <laughs> I says to him, "Do you want to know something though? You can live too long." I said, <laughs> "See, living too long is you know it's not a great thing either." And he he says he says he says what are you saying? I says, "No, no, no." I says, "You take out whatever you want." I said, "I'm only saying." I said, "It's good. It's 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 nice. It's been nice to have you for seventy two years." I says, "But living too long is not great. You know you." You know, you want, you, want, you want to consider that, you know, when you're, when you're and he looked at me and then I said, I'm only joking, I'm only joking. And uh, so, <laughs> he didn't like a taste of his own medicine. <laughs> no, but and, I, and, I, and, I, and obviously I was joking, but mm. but uh, I, I wanted to be antagonizing in the moment and I was very successful in doing that. So <laughs> well done, girl. <laughs> One point for you, Gary. I guess. In a yeah, weird way. yeah, yeah. You can probably. This is the first time we've talked, but hopefully, you get a, a vibe for my energy that it's. Uh, <laughs> that I feel I, like we could just talk all day. I feel like I could just hunker down for like three hours. But yeah. next time. Yeah. Can, can I ask you this? Can I ask you this then? Five, ten minutes to go, Max. I want to ask you this. What is success to Doctor Poppy Gibson? What does it mean to you in life? Personally, professionally, or both? Right. I used to think success was different in our personal and professional life. And what I've learned as I got older is you just have one life. There's just one success. When I was growing up, I wanted to be a teacher. I was a teacher. I thought success was being recognized by the school as the best teacher and, and that was destroying me. I was working till 10 o'clock every night, marking books. I wanted to have the most perfect marking with, you know, the perfect pens. I wanted to have the best stickers and the perfect classroom. I'd spend weekends decorating my classroom. And I thought that was success, you know, looking good outwardly to the rest of the school community. But, it, but it, every, everything, kind of like, you know, uh, Dorian Gray, the portrait in the attic, it was kind of like the more beautiful my classroom was. Like, you know, I was withering away and and it wasn't successful and and what I have realized now is success is inside you I used to think it was you know out, outwardly recognized but it's so not it's how you feel and I think success for me is waking up going to a, a job that I love having a family that I love having pets that I adore and just having a freedom of mind mm -hmm. and I think when I was in you know that previous space of thinking success was recognition from others it was so heavy but yeah. now like success is so light like success feels light and free and having a passion and meeting that passion and doing what you want and meeting people that you connect with like you Gary and success is being authentic mm -hmm. and I think when I was that teacher in that classroom beavering away I was trying to be what I thought a successful teacher was and what I've learned now that, that I work at university, success is being authentic, is role modeling to my students. Like I make mistakes, uh, I'm just a human, I'm trying my best, I'm a lifelong learner. Mm -hmm. And so I think success is, is just being yourself and finding the space where you can to be yourself. You know, do you know why? Do you know what you see? And I and I know I'm right when I say this here because you said it a few times, you said it a few times near the very end. And I was thinking it at the very start when you started. And then you actually came full circle into what I was thinking. You know, a, a large part of your 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 view and feeling and perception and what success means to you. It's about having the that courage and freedom just to be you. Mm -hmm. You know, we're like we are people pleasers. I am too. And lots mm -hmm. of ways I still like to be liked, like to be popular, and I'll never leave me. But no, what has left me is at my own expense. You know, so you carry that burden of wanting to be pleased because your classroom and the marking and the pens and the coursework and the how you turned up, blah, blah, blah. And now it's like you just turn up and you yeah. do whatever is you do, whatever you can to the best of your ability without that burden, without that rucksack in your back full of bricks, hoping that everybody's going to notice that you, you've done. You notice, you know, it's inside you. You've turned up. Like your amazing self, you do the best for your students. You do the best for you, and there's there's freedom in that. Totally freedom, and I think back to like what, at the start of this interview, you were saying about you know 
our social media networks. Like you're my Insta role model, by the way. I'm slowly learning. Um, but I think I used to care so much what people thought that all my energy was going on being a projection of myself. Yeah. And as I've truly looked inside like what success is, I've realized you can't manage people's expectations. Like my mom with the puzzles, right? Yeah. So I thought I'm gonna give her these puzzles. She'll be so happy. She'll send me photos on WhatsApp of her with finished puzzles. And my expectation was totally dashed. So I've also learned, don't expect, like what's that saying? Like, just just hope, but don't expect or yeah. like, so yeah. I've learned, actually you can't manage people's expectations. So all you can do is be you yeah. and they'll like it or they won't. Yeah. But don't worry, don't spend all your energy on that. And that's why I think I love social media. So now yeah. I'm just like, I'm just gonna post what I want when I want, if people like it, then fine. And if they don't, then they don't have to engage with it or I won't engage with them back. Yeah. Um, I've only ever blocked one person on Twitter, believe it or not. Yeah, one. Really? Wow. And, um, and I only put positive things and maybe that's what helps. So I do put some negative things about when I'm struggling with oh, yeah. my mental health at times. But I think if you put out that positive energy, positive people find you. And as a result, you have positive conversations. Yeah, 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 so yeah. that's what I'm doing. If, if people put a, 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 like, a mean comment I just don't engage with it and often my other like friends on social media will jump on it and <laughs> do the yeah. job for me and I just think just keep putting out that positivity yeah. and it, it will come back to you and, and that's what I'm realizing su success is now yeah. is finding those pockets of positivity and just yeah. and just living as yourself and yeah like you say shedding the expectation and the fear and the self-loathing and just thinking I'll just do what makes me happy and hopefully the people that engage with it will be happy too. Yeah. Do, do you feel successful? Are you successful today, Poppy? Um, do you know what? I feel, like, I feel like I'm doing the best I could do. And for me, I feel happy with that. Mm -hmm. Good. And, and are, you, are, you, are, you, are you happy today in your life? Yeah. I'm so happy. Do you know, it's been a roller coaster. And I still, ha you know, I say I'm happy right now. I'm so happy. I, I could have something trigger me in a minute and I'll be so miserable. <laughs> <laughs> and I think, gosh, I hate life. Life's so pointless. Yeah. But that's just a moment. And those yeah, moments yeah. pass. But generally, I'm just so full of joy. I just feel like life is amazing. And I think it's when we're worrying about all those little things like people's expectations, mm -hmm. we lose sight of how precious mm -hmm. our life is. Yeah. And when, when you finally realize that doesn't matter, you will just realize how beautiful every single day is every moment like even walking on campus today like i was looking at the flowers i take like half my camera roll is just like nature like stuff i saw that i never yeah. even share there's just so much beauty out there and i think again opening your mind to that not worrying about people but what you know think about the bigger picture of of our universe and our planet and yeah love it's, it, love it. Love yeah, it. it just it just reminds you we are so lucky to be here and life is precious and just let that negativity go unless it's your parent then just try and manage it <laughs> as best you can. Yeah. But but <laughs> generally let the other stuff go. Let the people go, like yeah. you said, Gary. Let the people go who don't matter. Uh, don't listen to the, those you know negative comments. They really don't matter. What matters is is you and how you feel about you, and oh, that's what you you can take control of. You know, do you know what I'm laughing at to myself and sort of uh, inside when you're talking there, which is amazing. You're talking about your camera roll and nature and all the rest of it. And I'm, I was asking myself, what's my camera roll? And it's all full of selfies that I put on. <laughs> <laughs> Gary, Gary, mine is also all selfies. 50% beautiful nature, 50% selfies. Yeah. Well, <laughs> sure, we, sure, sure, yeah. Sure, aren't we, the <laughs> most, aren't we the most beautiful form of nature? So... Um, <laughs> Uh, that's, what I, that's what I'm telling myself anyway. So I put it up because I do a lot of personal branding and putting people in Forbes and on fancy podcasts and TED talks and you know it's all about the you know I suppose that's I suppose that's where I have a slight con not a conflict but I suppose that's where what, what I do has been cathartic and therapeutic. I encourage people to turn up their best their, their authentic self their best self sharing their story the warts and all the ups the downs and the sideways. And uh, and and that's what I do, and and I suppose that that's what one of the reasons why I do what I do because I I, I love that for myself too. But do you know what I wanted to ask you was um, the last what was it? Yes, you're somebody that I I would be fairly sure you have got your own toolbox of of well being and self care tools. Can you share with us 
some of the things that you would do that that help you that maybe help reset you or maybe just some things you would do on the daily maybe maybe any routines anything at all yeah anything so firstly to say never think your toolbox is full and never think you can't throw stuff out the toolbox that you thought was working um because you know as as we age we change and you know we we find interest in new things so your well-being is going to change similarly just like your favorite foods or your favorite film like your well-being will change. So I think for me, the one constant though is nature. So uh, last night, for example, I, I was in work 10 till four, had a conference and I went home and I was so tired. I was like, I'm just, I'm just gonna go to bed. Like I'm gonna put my kids to bed at seven. I'm gonna go to bed. And then I thought, do you know, what? I'm gonna walk the dog. And even just, it was a 10 minute walk, just like the sound of the birds, the smell of like, you know, just like the, the flowers and the cars and, I, I went home, I ended up staying up till like 1am. Yeah. But So I think having a break, particularly screens for me is, is really valuable because, you know, we're all spending more time on screens, which I love. I don't think that's a bad thing for me personally, but actually then take a break or, or I'll limit my screen time. I go, I'm going to walk the dog, but I'm only allowed one selfie on the walk or, yeah, or you yeah. know, maybe five because that one might be perfect. <laughs> um, yeah, like appreciate what's around me is so powerful. So the most meaningful things I do is take my children to the playground, go to the beach, uh, just walk. I've got a nature reserve in my house, just walk through there and just, you know, engage those senses. So anything sensory, so cooking a new recipe is a thing. I actually only started last month. Um, so I was like, I'm gonna just look on the internet, find a recipe I've never made that sounds good and make a new thing. And that will engage your mind in different ways because you're cutting a vegetable that you don't frequently cook or yeah. you've got to look what are the times, you know, rather than those meals we make where we know them off by heart. Yeah. Uh, so that that's been quite a fun thing I've been doing and I think that also makes me look forward like after a busy day I think oh I'm going to try that new recipe so it extends my enjoyment of the day because okay. I'm not just thinking I'm going to jump on you know ordering some takeaway on a on a well-known website I'm actually going to challenge my mind and eat something you know nutritious and and then I'll share that recipe with a friend and I feel like you know that they might enjoy making that and so yeah, I think that's the thing I'm just starting to get into. I'll probably be bored of that, like by the, the next time we speak. But yeah. do, you, do you do you use one of those air fryers? No, I don't. I Gary, don't judge me, but I have a deep fat fryer. Uh -huh. No, I don't judge anybody. I've got the full oil. I, yeah, I made yeah, yeah. Mars bars actually. The first thing I I made when I got it was deep fried Mars bars. Yeah, yeah, they're a thing. I ate them in Glasgow last Christmas. The um at, at the chip shop and um. They do. They used to do them years ago in the town I lived in in Limavady, about half an hour from here. But they don't do them traditionally over here. Oh. They do them with a bit of ice cream, actually. Yum! You I'm gonna have to make those tonight, Gary. But here, I air, air, air fryers the way forward. People Maybe are, people are mad. Oh, need to we, make healthier choices. Listen, I have I have one right. Um, we got we got a like a wee basic one just to test the water. You know, it can do a few ch not even healthy stuff, but it can do the other stuff healthier. Like mm -hmm. chips, healthier. So so anyway, we ended up with a big fancy one. You know the one you see with the two drawers. <laughs> so so we've, we've ended up with this big fancy thing. But I'll tell you what, game changer. Is it? Swear to God, honestly, worth consideration. And uh, and uh, there's a guy that over the pandemic shot the fame through a uh, meals and like ingredients and recipes for the air fryer. Um, we he, he, he's book best selling books out now. And he's, he's, what's your what's your favorite? What's your favorite FR recipe? Oh well, no, disclaimer: I'm not big into actually cooking on it. I just like it because my my wife does different bits and bobs. I'm I'm one of those cavemen that can't mm. cook one cook. I'll tell you what is good. What is good for me for it's just good for me for doing stuff like I can put. I eat a lot of lean back bacon and I put different things in it and I put different bits of chicken in it. And it just yes. is easy. Yeah. I don't have to go how do I, I don't even know how to turn the oven on. <laughs> right? So, so but but yet I can switch the air fryer on, <laughs> air fry, pick my tent so I can use it. What I'm trying to say is it's like full proof for idiots for like me. So uh but a lot of people get very fancy on it and do all their fancy things on it. So it's worth I'll I'll share I'll share the book I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah, please do. And also, tell me this last thing. Or do you read? Do you read much? Oh, I read all the time, Gary. Give, give me a couple of book recommendations. It can be anything. Any genre. Uh, hmm. Okay. I'll be honest. I'm I'm probably not going to recommend any because they're all just like horrors. 
Real horrors. My best book I've ever read, and nothing haunts me like it, is called Tokyo uh, by Mo Hader. She unfortunately oh. passed away, but it's called Tokyo. And it is the most haunting book I've ever read. Incredible. And so, yeah, I think books for me are great escapism. That would be a great thing in my wellbeing toolkit. Uh, yeah. So that's what I've tried to do as well before bed. You know, you get in bed, you think, I'll just quickly check social media, but then you're on it for half an hour. So now yeah. I start thinking about, I'll check for 10 minutes and then read for 20. Yeah. Um, and that that really makes a difference. I find it helps my brain like be a bit quieter when it comes to turn the light out. So, because then you're thinking about the plot instead of thinking about your life plot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You're, you're, listen, you're so right. And you, that's something that, that I, that is difficult in my world because I'm very much in the, the, the mindset, a personal development, a PR, personal brand, and, you know, content world. Um, a lot of my books, as you can see behind me, are all, all related to that. And mm -hmm. guess what? I actually find myself gravitating away from them because it's more of the same. It's deeper. You're going deeper into the well. It's, where's the escapism? Mm -hmm. where, so I actually need to find that balance where I... Yeah, I guess in fiction. Yeah, yeah. Or even, even I tell you, another thing that I would be into is like, you know, maybe sporting autobiographies or something. I like to know yeah. about the lives of some people that I've admired, maybe. That's um, a great idea. You know, so... That will help you when you come to write yours in a few years, Gary. Yeah, well, I, I'm actually in a few books. Would you believe it? I'm in four or five books as a co-author, but I need to write my own book. But um, yeah, do. well, I don't need to. I, I will when the time's right. I, do you want to know why I wouldn't do it now? Because you're just to live. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll wait. He'd, he'd love to, he'd love to, he'll, he'll love long. Uh, <laughs> so uh, that's a joke, anybody. Well, it's not a joke. Maybe he will live long. Um, but I... I... Uh, feel like I have so much more to achieve. Mm -hmm. If I wrote a damn book now, it would be out of date next year. That's how my life's moving. Yeah, don't write it too soon. You know, I, I have so much more to achieve. I'm only scratching the surface. And like, if I wrote a book now, like, I'm going to have to write another one. You need like 10 editions. Yeah, I know. You, you, can, write books, you <laughs> can write books very cleverly now with that whole artificial intelligence crap. But mm -hmm. uh, I say crap, but that's neg you know, probably has its uses. But anyway. Yeah, and don't that, upset the robots, Gary. Don't say anything uh, bad about the robots. No, no, we love the don't. robots. If no, robots are listening, yeah, we love you. Yeah, yeah, they comment to me all the time on Twitter, those guys. <laughs> uh, I'm big in India. <laughs> They're allowed opinions too, Gary. Yes. Listen, last thing. Best place to connect with you on. I know you're different social media platforms, but where where are you most? Where am I most on social media? Yeah. Yeah, it's got to be Twitter. It's got to be Twitter for me. And what I love about Twitter is just the openness. Mm -hmm. So I've started to get into Instagram. As you know, I'm taking baby steps, yeah. learning from pros like you, Gary. <laughs> but um, what I, I find it a bit, um, I don't want to say pretentious. And anyone that, that I'm friends with on there, you are not the ones I'm talking about. But yeah. a lot of people, you know, will follow me. I'll follow them back. And then the next day they've unfollowed. And and I think that quest for numbers is back to what we were saying, it's back to that backpack, right? Yeah. People that are seeking numbers, that's not healthy. I think, so say with Twitter, I've never sought out for followers. It's, it's never mattered to me. All I've wanted is to connect with, with positive people like you go, with, with good people. Yeah. I think if you connect with the right people, your numbers will grow. Mm -hmm. And I think to see people that must be so concerned um, about followers that they're, they're following and following, that just sounds exhausting. Like, please stop. That isn't what, that's not an authentic brand in my opinion. Yeah. Um, and I believe it's because Instagram has like the cap on how many people you can follow. Yeah. But yeah, it just, for me, that feels that feels a little bit fake. Yeah. But then I do see some amazing people there like you, Gary, and, and other really fantastic people who use the platform as a great way of sharing knowledge. And I love it. I'm not quite there with my skills yet. I'm trying, I make like really tiny little rubbishy yeah. reels. And, but I but I think that's what I like about Twitter. Like what you see is what you get. Um, it's public, so I think that also makes me more thoughtful of what I post because I think yeah. this is like a social footprint that my children might see in the future. Yeah. So I think it gives me just that little bit of a reminder. Uh, yeah. Be cautious what you post. Yeah. So, but but I do love it, and I could not be more grateful for the people I've met, the opportunities that I've met, and. And I meet other like other people that I work with, other academics, like they're not on any social media yeah. uh, or maybe they have Facebook with their family. I'm like, 
get out there. There's a whole world of people yeah. out there. And yeah, the people I've met, you know, we've ridden stuff together. We've gone places together. We've like, they even just people that open your mind or challenge one yeah. of your preconceptions, like is so powerful. Yeah. yeah. I just, Twitter for me is the one, but, but connecting with anyone anywhere can be yeah. so important. Well, I think that's amazing. And thank you for sharing. Anybody listening to this here, I actually tried to follow you back on, on Instagram. Do you know what Instagram is doing on me at the minute? I do not know why. It's allowing me to follow some people and it's given me the option to follow some people, but then it unfollows automatically when I leave their page. How strange. It is bloody weird. And should, I see, I think, because I've was i been trying to follow you for like a week, because I look at all your stuff, but I think I'm at my, my follower cap. Oh, I, I honestly, I, listen, I could be the same. Actually, that could be it. Maybe there is, is that a thing? Is there a follow? Yeah, I think you're only allowed 7,500 that you're allowed to follow. I know your followers are like 60 million, but <laughs> yeah, that you're, you're only allowed to follow 7,500. I read I read that. Oh right. So let me just check something here. Just, so if you're around wow. Well, I'm at seven five oh seven. Yeah. So they give you like a couple of extra leeway, but you'll probably find they'll delete them. Right, right. So that, that's why, that's why. Right, okay. I'm going to unfollow a whole pile of people now. <laughs> <laughs> there's your activity for the weekend Gary <laughs> you see, you see, see when you go in see when you go into your followers you can click a bit where it says least engaged yeah and so you know who you're not like you've exactly what's, what's I found that really useful yeah. yeah I like that but anyway listen it's all fun all good um thank you so much I appreciate you thank you so much this has been fun this has yes. been a little bit spicy a little bit of you know childhood trauma yes. that's, always, that's always interesting <laughs> Listen, if you don't have any childhood trauma, you've missed out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we've all got childhood trauma, Gary. Yeah, but listen, thank you so much. Uh, thank you for the I've made a new friend. I'm very grateful. And uh, I keep following you and keep supporting you, my friend. Thank you so much. So grateful. Take care.